Next, I would, I'm honored that Donna Keckney will speak. I have to breathe now. Um, I'm learning so much about her. It's wonderful. It's wonderful because, well, first of all, let me just say I'm really happy to be here with you all. And uh, that's another reunion. But uh, I'm really happy to be here and to celebrate uh, Marjorie's life in, in, in small part and uh, share a couple of um, fond memories I have. Um, and getting to know her over all these years was, was quite a blessing in my life. But you know, we had a lot in common. I was um, a ballet student in Detroit, Michigan, and um, which was my salvation. It was the 50s. <laughs> and um, there was a big story in the Detroit Free Press the ballet was coming through town, Masonic Temple. <laughs> and um, there was a hometown girl made good. She was going to replace, she was in the corps, and she was going to replace a principal in the company. Well, my God, somebody made it out of Detroit. <laughs> my inspiration, I mean, not only out of Detroit, but into Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. So there I was, second balcony with my ballet girlfriends. And uh, that was, uh, uh, let me tell you the vision I saw. Um, there she was. She, for us, can you imagine how important that was? She had no idea. Um, she came out, and first of all, she was a gorgeous dancer. And she came out in this, I'll never forget it, it's one of those indelible memories with this, this emerald green costume, the jeweled top and the tutu, and her dark hair piled on her, he her head, and she was magnificent with those gorgeous eyes. I was in the second balcony, but I could see her eyes, <laughs> limpid pools of blue, gorgeous. Well, that was it, okay. Um, she had no idea then. I was able to tell her many, many years later uh, how she showed me the way. Because a few years later, I was 15 and I ran away from home and became a dancer in New York. <laughs> well, it wasn't just because of Marjorie. I mean, there are other circumstances, as my friends know. But, um, but she, she represented to me, we need that, that inspiration, you know, in our, in our small towns, of whether we see it on television, but, but she was it for me. Okay, so I'm in New York, and then, uh, you know, that time, 1959, West Side Story, I think it was still on, wasn't it, Harvey? Yep. <laughs> and, you know, these people, you know, I was like, oh my God, Sheeta Rivera was in Bye Bye Birdie, and, uh, and Marjorie Beto was now made her transition to Broadway, she was handpicked by Bob Fosse, who was an up-and-coming choreographer. <laughs> there was a time when he was up-and-coming. <laughs> Jerome Robbins. And these, these dancers in West Side Story were like gods to us. I mean, they, many of them became my friends, <clears throat> happily, and uh, some my dance teachers in, uh, in, on 8th Avenue. And, and uh, there she was again, and we never really were close in those years, but because she was like an older sister, you know, always, you know, always being there for me to go, yes, it can be done. And uh, I, and we would see each other in class and steps and Luigi's and in the day, and um, she, we always had this mutual respect and admiration, and we would catch up with each other. She would always be now directing, choreographing, and it wasn't really until she wrote her book and she asked me to be interviewed that I really appreciated the great legacy she had. Uh, the, and how much we shared, how, much, how many people we knew, and, we, and, and the stories, we love to tell stories. Yes, she was a great storyteller and she, let, she loved to hear stories, right? 
Um, so that, that was so much fun, and it was soon after that where this is when I really got to know her with our dear, dear friends and her friends that she loved so much, Ray and John and Diane. And I would be, uh, had such great time, you know, spending time getting to know her and, and all the travels that they had together that she loved and, and the pictures that I got sent and, and they were just, you know, the joy in her life. She designed her life the way she wanted it and dealt with everything that came her way. Okay, so a couple years ago, um, I was asked to do a number at the 92nd Street Y, or a couple numbers from Redhead. So I thought, gosh, I, you know, I would love to do that. I've never done that, and uh, you know, we all love Gwen and Bobby. And, uh, so I thought, well, where do I, I, get, I can't do it unless I do that choreography. It just wouldn't be right. So where do I get that choreography? Marjorie. So I go to her, and uh, she was so great. We had so much fun. Okay, we were pouring over the, 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 the music. She had her lab of notation in pencil. All these little steps on every note and on the words and to try to figure it out. And, and we did that. And, uh, and it was just, you know, it goes here in this new pitch and with the Charlie Chaplin walk. In this. And it was so much fun. And, you know, because that's what we do, we pass it on. But to have that from her. And, you know, because along with that, there's the Bob Fosse and there's Gwen in there. And, and, and Jack Cole. And it, it, was, it, it was quite wonderful. Um, 